got so we got or got a question today um, about CNS fatigue. So can you kind of just go over what what is CNS fatigue and is you know how do you quant how do you quantify it? Uh, CNS fatigue would be fatigue of the central nervous system. Um, up until recently, it hasn't been able to be quantified really well or understood very well. It's a term that's kind of thrown around quite a bit uh, with the thinking that high intensity work uh, causes CNS fatigue. Um, recent research indicates that it's not just high intensity efforts that, that produce CNS fatigue, but uh, just as much low intensity or high volume work or even a lot of endurance work can, can induce CNS fatigue. You can track it through things like uh, omega waves or looking at uh, even indirectly through things like HRV. Uh, you can get some feel for it, and this is somewhat anecdotal, I think through looking at just basic motor, motor skill, especially fine motor skill, um, uh, accomplishing tasks, maintaining balance, uh, looking at performance outputs. Um, it's Something I think that's still to this day, I, I think anyone that tells you is they fully understand it is probably not uh, not telling the truth or doesn't know how much they don't know. Um, but I think we're getting starting to get a little bit better feel for it. Basically, it's brain fatigue is ultimately what it comes down to, and it affects a lot of things from motor task performance to decision making and reaction time, things like that. What do you think is the best way to just crush your central nervous system, like? If you were just like in, in three days, just to know what not to do, well, how would you do that? Um, I think there's a couple things. One would be anytime you induce an, a, a novel stimulus without a planned progressive buildup, that would do it. It's, it, it. So if that load is super high, both in volume and intensity, and the stimulus is relatively novel, like this person isn't prepared for it, that's how you do it. Um, you know, you, that's the classic um, overzealous starters workout where you just kind of feel a gung-ho and you get after it and you do too much too quick and you're high volume and high intensity. You're checking all the boxes for um, inducing CNS fatigue. I don't think one day is going to do it. I think you probably would need to see a couple days to see a, a prolonged depression. Um, but I suppose that's somewhat individual. And then with track guys talking about keeping weight room in, do you think that that could induce it? Or if it was not novel, that it just wouldn't really have an effect? Uh, I, I've never seen it to be an issue. I don't, I don't think that um, stress is – this. I don't think that the particular stress that the person experiences is all that important. So in all likelihood, you get CNS fatigue if you don't sleep, if you – uh, are, you know, have a couple deaths in the family if you are, uh, you know, under a huge workload or study load or whatever. So I think CNS fatigue is not something that is particular to just training, but I think is just something that is an outcome of our brain saying back off from this stress. So uh, it, does weight room work do it? Could weight room work do it? For sure. But so could a lot of other things. Is weight room work special in its effect in terms of CNS fatigue, I highly doubt it. In fact, I would say that uh, if you have it in there and they're trained for it, uh, building up to a certain point, then I don't think it's gonna be any different than say a CNS fatigue of, of sprinting or CNS fatigue of jumping. You take, a, take someone that all they do is sprint and you put them in the weight room and hammer them there, probably get a huge CNS load. You take someone who is an Olympic weightlifter and all they do is lift, you have them sprint, they'll probably get crushed from that. So I don't think it's something that is particular to a given task or training type. I think it's more just doing too much too soon of something that they're not accustomed to doing. Do you think it's the most, the biggest factor in performance drops when you talk about fatigue or is there, are there just so many others that you couldn't just say, this is why performance dropped off? I think it could be a handful of things. Um, but I, th I think it's one of the key factors. Uh, I put it in a put it in a top five for sure. But again, it's not super well understood. 
Uh, it's something that we don't have a, uh, a really easily accessible way of monitoring, um, so at least quantifiably. So, uh, but I, my hunch is that it would be one of the big ones. Sweet, thanks.